All right. So, first of all, I do these monologues not because I think I know everything. I'm not a know-it-all. In fact, I'm more of a learn-it-all. Um, I'm open to learning, and I learn new things every day. I've been wrong a thousand times, and I'll be a wrong a thousand and more times. So if you disagree with uh, my monologue, feel free to email me at onair at superhumanradio.net. And uh, maybe I'll have you on the show. Maybe your opinion will actually challenge me enough to have you on the show. There's a guy who completely disagreed with my uh, calories in, calories out position. I'm not going to say his name because he hasn't agreed to come on the show yet, but I hope he does. He's a longtime listener. And he says that my approach to calories in, calories out is tantamount to baby talk. And uh, I'll save this discussion for when he comes on. Um, but again, I just want people to think you, in order to become a critical thinker, you have to spend a lot of time thinking and comparing and analyzing and coming to conclusions and then maybe readjusting your conclusions. And this is, this is the best thing in life. I want to talk about passion today because life without passion is hollow. Um, the, the dictionary defines passion as a strong and barely controllable emotion. Now, this doesn't mean that people who are passionate are going to be reckless, but it's an emotion that you can't just suppress. And when we look at love, which is another subject that I'm going to talk about later, because I have some very strong opinions about love. I've shared these opinions with my own children. Love without passion is platonic. You know what I mean? Passion is an energy. Passion inspires. Um, Passion will not take a number. You know, when you walk in and and you motor vehicle and they go, take a number, sit down and wait. Passion won't do that. It won't sit down and wait. Passion demands to be paid attention to. And what happens to couples when they lose passion, is they become old. We attribute passion to youth. It it really is, right? Passionate. When you're young and passionate, you can't keep your hands off each other. You know, um, that is energetic. That is a life force. And when you get older, eh, you know, oh, you get used to each other. It doesn't have to be that way. By the way, I don't think you can really be passionate when you're older without having your hormones adjusted. Um, Because when men go through andropause and women go through menopause, they lose passion. We know that oxytocin levels drop and oxytocin levels connect us emotionally. They help us bond to each other. So if you're in a relationship, finding ways to keep passion alive is tantamount to not ending up 80 years old and resenting the other person and wondering, why didn't I leave a long time ago? You have to find ways to be passionate, but passion is bi-directional. If you're a passionate person and you're with somebody who's not passionate, that'll get old after a while. You'll start to resent them. You'll feel bad about yourself because you feel like, I love them so much, and I I just want to, I have these uncontrollable feelings of of passion for them. Why don't they feel that way about me? Am I doing something wrong? Maybe I don't really uh, excite them anymore. But the reality is that love without passion is roommate. Right? You can be with a roommate for 10 years, love them, great people, but you're not passionate about them. So the goal for those of us in long-term relationships is to find ways to be passionate again. Quite frankly, I don't think it can happen if you're older and you're not hormonally adjusted, really. Because I remember when I first got on testosterone, I was going through a divorce. But I remember that all of a sudden I had the mental energy to court. 
I wanted to go out on dates. I wanted to see girls. I wanted to be with women because it revived that energy that is behind passion. Um, when you look at your person, you used to be passionate about them. When you used to look at them when you were younger, you couldn't keep your hands off them. All you did was think about them when you were away from them. Um, passion can be distracting, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I really don't. You have to look at that person again through the eyes of passion to really, really reconnect, to really finish your life with them. And I see older people all the time, older, in their 70s and 80s, who are just so cute together. You know, oh, he won't leave me alone. He's always going to grab my, you know, trying to grab me. And, you know, that's passion. And like love, passion rewards the person experiencing it. So those who hold back passion because they feel like they're giving something away don't understand that when you have passion for this other person, and you look at them, and you feel so good inside, that's rewarding you. They can't feel that. Passion rewards the person experiencing it. So find ways to increase passion in your life. And I'm talking relationships, right? You could be passionate about a job. I'm passionate about a project right now. But be passionate about people because that will improve the quality of your life till the day that you die. And that's my monologue for today. And if you have any uh, ideas, things I left out, email me at onair at superhumanradio.net, and I'm happy to oblige. It is Friday. My motorcycle is sitting outside. The current weather here is 93 degrees, and I'm going to get on and ride because I am passionate about riding my motorcycle, too. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Remember... Muscle is metabolic currency, so get into the gym and make a deposit. And stronger is younger. So if you're stronger next week than you are this week, you just got younger. All right, take care.